T.O. Healed the Paternal Wound, Chapter 2 As you immerse yourself in this process, it's crucial to recognize and accept the wound and the emotions it stirs within you if you truly want to transcend the father wound. It's through acknowledgement and acceptance that we can begin to transform our pain and find healing. I invite you to delve into a safe and nurturing space, where you can closely examine the wounds that have emotionally affected you. This is a courageous and transformative act, allowing you to dismantle the layers of denial and avoidance you've built over time. By acknowledging the wound, you'll be facing the truth of your emotional experience head-on. It might be a challenging process, as it can evoke intense emotions and revive painful moments from the past. However, it's within this vulnerability that the opportunity for healing and growth resides. In this chapter, we will delve into the powerful journey of self-exploration and reflection, not for you to become a victim of the past but to free yourself from it, releasing yourself from limiting patterns and beliefs. Acceptance involves fully embracing your experience and all the emotions that arise. It means recognizing that the wound has left a mark on your life and that you have been affected by it. However, it's not about resigning or settling it's about opening up to the reality of what has happened and how it has impacted you, how you've interpreted it, and discovering how you can reinterpret it with a healing focus. Through this introspective lens, you'll be able to closely examine how the wound has influenced your thoughts, beliefs, and behavioral patterns. You'll be able to observe how it has shaped your relationships, self-concept, and your way of engaging with the world. By facing and embracing your pain, you can start to heal and transform the way you relate to yourself and others. Neurologist and psychiatrist Viktor Frankl once said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. In this way, embrace the challenge of recognizing and accepting your paternal wound, and open yourself to the possibility of transforming into a fuller version of yourself, someone beyond the wounds of the past. Become an authentic individual capable of living in the present and creating opportunities in your life. Here, I invite you to take this important step on your path to healing and chart a course towards transformation and liberation. To begin, it's important to accept the reality of what happened in childhood and how it has impacted your adult life. This might involve facing difficult emotions such as sadness, anger, or resentment. Recognition means identifying the emotions associated with the paternal wound. By recognizing and accepting the paternal wound, we take control of our own destiny and open ourselves to the possibility of living a fuller, more authentic, and conscious life. In the words of Carl Jung, a prominent psychologist and author, what is not brought to consciousness, comes to us as fate. To start and become acquainted with this process, we are going to engage in two simple yet highly therapeutic exercises. The exercises I suggest will assist you in becoming aware of the sensations and emotions stored in different parts of your body. This will allow you to identify how your paternal wound manifests physically and how you can shift your perspective towards it. 1. Take a moment to relax and breathe deeply. Close your eyes and direct your attention to your body. Begin to scan your body from head to toe. Notice if there's any tension or sensation in a particular area. Once you identify tension or sensation, focus on that area and ask yourself what emotion or feeling arises in this part of my body. It could be sadness, anger, fear, etc. Keep your attention on that area and allow yourself to feel that emotion. Observe how it manifests physically in your body. Is there any specific sensation? Is there warmth, tightness, stiffness, or any other sensation? 2. Now try to identify the emotions that arise when thinking about an experience related to your father. Ask yourself this question and jot it down on paper. Do you feel sadness, anger, pain, disappointment, or abandonment? Write down the experience and next to it, write down what kind of emotions and sensations are stirred up when thinking about it. 3. The next time you talk to or visit your father, pay attention to the sensations that arise in your body, whether they are tension, rejection, nervousness, etc. Then, jot them down on paper. These exercises will help you become aware of which parts of your body store emotions and tensions. It will also help you better understand where your wound manifests, where it reflects in your body, and in this way, change your perspective. Let's start moving away from being victims of a world that seems unchangeable, and begin to accept that the change starts within oneself. Exercise 1. Emotional Awareness 
visualize that recurring memory in your mind and allow the emotions associated with it to manifest in your body. Notice if you feel a knot in your stomach, a burning sensation in your chest, if your heart races, or if thoughts of resentment come rushing in. Allow these sensations and emotions to be present without judging or rejecting them. Now, grab a paper and pen to engage in a therapeutic writing exercise. Write freely about that memory and all the emotions, thoughts, and sensations that arise in relation to it. Don't worry about grammar or coherence, just let yourself flow and express everything you feel and think in that moment. Ask yourself, where in my body have I felt tension or discomfort? What request for love did I have towards my father? What emotional need was left unfulfilled? What physical need was left unfulfilled? How did mom respond to the neglect or abandonment by my father? Did mom also feel abandoned by her husband? Did I have to take on roles that weren't mine? What's behind my resentment towards my father? What consequences have I experienced from having an emotional absence of my father? If you didn't have a father due to abandonment or early death, ask yourself. What consequences did I experience due to that absence? Have I attributed the absence of my father as the cause of all the injustices I've experienced later in my life? Have I blamed my father for not protecting me in difficult situations where I felt I needed him, and have I related those negative experiences to him? Sure, make sure to note down your answers on a paper. In the next exercise, we'll analyze them. Give yourself permission to feel. We deny our emotions and store them deep within our unconscious, believing that they will disappear that way. However, these repressed emotions find a way to surface and manifest as issues, illnesses, and unconscious reactions that hinder us from achieving well-being and success. At times, we feel obligated to not allow ourselves to experience certain emotions, especially those we deem negative. We become accustomed to overcoming challenges and moving forward, choosing to forget and stop talking about matters we wish had never happened. However, our unconscious doesn't forget anything it retains everything. And what it holds eventually comes to light, whether we like it or not. This isn't about obsessing or solely focusing on the negative, nor about victimizing ourselves. It's about allowing ourselves to feel what we didn't allow at the time because we considered it impure, inhuman, or sinful. The pain and guilt we experienced in the past were difficult to manage and understand, especially for a child. But now you have the opportunity to review and release that unprocessed emotional trauma, as long as you feel ready to do so. If the trauma is very intense, it's advisable to address it with the help of a therapist, as managing certain wounds can be challenging. In many cases, as the wound is significant, so is the rejection of it and the resistance to revisiting the associated pain. This resistance is a natural defense mechanism of the brain. Therefore, in more extreme situations, when attempting to connect with that wound, your brain might enter survival mode, and you may experience some depersonalization due to the post-traumatic effect. If this applies to your case, seeking the guidance of a professional is recommended. If not, continue on your journey of healing and emotional exploration. Exercise 2. Deep Desires. This exercise is based on the importance of recognizing and expressing your hidden feelings and desires. By responding to the previous questions, you are given the opportunity to formulate sentences that reflect your deep emotions and longings. This exercise involves acknowledging that your father may have been a certain way, but you desired something else. You will express what your wish was. Here are some examples of sentences. I wish my father would listen to me and understand me. I never have his approval and criticism for every step I choose to take. My father never listened to me, and I needed his love and support. My father left us, and I had to carry responsibilities that weren't mine. I lost my childhood and couldn't play like other boys or girls. Because of my father, my mother was always sad, and I wished to be cared for, but I didn't exist for anyone. My father hit me, and my mother did nothing. I feel resentment towards both of them. I would have wished for my parents to love and protect me, and not be my enemies. Because they didn't protect me, I was also mistreated at school and couldn't defend myself. I resent my parents for making me miserable, and I can't stand seeing happy families because it triggers my family wound. Now, take paper and pen and write a sentence that summarizes your hidden feelings and desires in two or three lines. Allow yourself to be honest with yourself and let your emotions find their voice.
The unconscious doesn't understand the concept of time. We live our everyday life without being aware of how a forgotten past wound can influence our present. It can be difficult to understand how a father's abandonment wound can hinder our success in a work project, but it's all interconnected in the complex workings of our brain and emotions. Even though it may seem that the past and the present have nothing to do with each other, they are deeply connected in reality. Our unconscious mind doesn't distinguish between the past and the present to it, there is only the present moment. Time is a mental construct that helps us organize our experience, structure space and time, but for our unconscious, only the now exists. That's why any unprocessed emotion, any painful experience we've rejected because it makes us feel small, guilty, or miserable, remains unresolved. It's as if a wound from the past is waiting in the shadows, subtly influencing our decisions and actions in the present. We find ourselves repeating patterns and facing obstacles that seem to have no logical explanation. But in reality, it's the echo of that emotional wound we haven't yet healed. This was the case for Clara. Clara found herself in a desperate situation. Her business wasn't thriving, expenses were surpassing profits, and the moment to close its doors was approaching. Additionally, she was experiencing insomnia and anxiety, without understanding why everything seemed to be working against her. What Clara didn't know was that her unconscious fear was blocking her own success. Her decisions, although they seemed wrong, were being made from a logical place within her. Success in her business meant something much deeper to her. In her unconscious mind, the meaning of success was associated with the idea of not seeing her mother suffer. In this way, not succeeding was linked to betraying her mother. Let's take a closer look at this. Clara's wound had its roots in her father's abandonment. When she was only five years old, her father decided to leave with another woman, leaving her family behind. Her mother was depressed due to the divorce. Her mother's wound was created when her husband fell in love with a co-worker from his new office job. It was shortly after he changed jobs. After this event, Clara was deeply impacted she grew up without a father figure and the much-needed support. Furthermore, her mother fell into a deep depression due to the divorce, which exacerbated the situation even further. The suffering of her mother generated three painful associations in Clara abandonment, economic vulnerability, and betrayal in the workplace. Unconsciously, Clara had absorbed these ideas and directly associated them with success in her new business venture. For her, succeeding in her business was equivalent to betraying her mother, as the unconscious interpreted that professional success implied a betrayal similar to what her father had committed when he fell in love with a co-worker while experiencing professional success. Clara's unconscious mind, in its attempt to protect her and her mother, was sabotaging her own success in the business. It was as if her subconscious mind activated an automatic defense mechanism to prevent the business from thriving. This mechanism was based on the unconscious association of entrepreneurial success with feelings of betrayal and the fear of financial vulnerability, deep wounds that originated from her father's abandonment and her mother's subsequent depression. Clara's unconscious mind was programmed to believe that if she succeeded in her business, she would be repeating the pattern of betrayal that her father had established by falling in love with a co-worker. In her mind, professional success was directly linked to disloyalty and the abandonment of her mother. Therefore, her subconscious activated self-sabotaging mechanisms to avoid confronting these emotions and to shield her from the perceived financial vulnerability that she believed would come as a consequence of success. This unconscious defense mechanism operated at a deep level, beyond Clara's conscious awareness. She couldn't understand why her business wasn't taking off despite all her efforts. It was only when she explored and understood the underlying associations and beliefs that she could begin to free herself from them. By becoming aware of how her past and family wounds were influencing her present, Clara was able to challenge and dismantle these unconscious patterns. As she healed emotional wounds and worked on transforming limiting beliefs, her business began to flourish. New opportunities arose, and she felt empowered to make more accurate decisions aligned with her true desires and goals. Clara learned to recognize and challenge the negative associations that her subconscious mind had established, allowing her to create a new narrative and write her own destiny. She was able to separate her own path from her mother's suffering and found the courage to succeed without feeling guilty. This story teaches us the importance of exploring our emotional wounds and understanding how they can influence our present life. Often, we carry burdens that are not our own and blame ourselves for situations beyond our control. 
However, by recognizing that we are individual beings with our own experiences and responsibilities, we can detach from the emotional burdens of others and find our own path to success and personal fulfillment. Clara's transformation shows us that by understanding the unconscious mechanisms that limit us, we can unleash our potential and open ourselves to new possibilities. As she healed her wounds and released limiting beliefs, Clara opened herself to a world of opportunities in her business. She found the courage to pursue her goals without feeling guilty about the past. This story invites us to reflect on our own wounds and how we can free ourselves from self-imposed limitations. By exploring our emotions and understanding how they have influenced our decisions and actions, we can challenge negative patterns and open ourselves to a brighter future. Emotional healing and releasing the burdens of the past allow us to live a fuller, more authentic life filled with possibilities for success and well-being. Exercise 3 The Past in the Present It's important to recognize the exercise above and the sentence you've written. Now, take a moment to reflect on the relationship between your paternal wound and your current reactions in life. There might be patterns or behaviors that are connected to that wound and are influencing how you handle challenges in the present. For instance, observe whether you reject or feel uncomfortable in the presence of happy families. Could it be that this triggers the pain of your paternal wound, reminding you of what you didn't have in your own family? Reflect on how this wound might be impacting your relationships and your ability to experience happiness. Another example is if you experience fear or anxiety when facing new projects or challenges. Could it be related to your father's abandonment wound and the lack of support you felt when you started your first course in school? Observe how this past experience could be influencing your self-confidence and your ability to tackle challenges securely. Ask yourself, what is the relationship between my current difficulties and the paternal wound? Am I afraid of not succeeding due to the fear of paternal criticism? Am I acting authentically and in alignment with my own desires and needs, or am I driven by the unconscious need to seek external validation and recognition to fill the void of validation I felt from my father? Do I feel like I don't exist for anyone, just as I felt I didn't exist for my father? Is that feeling of invisibility influencing how I perceive myself and relate to others currently? Does the sense of not mattering or not being valued relate to my paternal abandonment wound and affect my self-esteem and the way I relate to others in my current life? Am I letting this fear prevent me from pursuing my goals and reaching my full potential? Every time I start a new project, do I feel abandonment and fear? Can I relate this fear to the abandonment of my father in the early stages of important things for me? Accepting the reality of what happened it is essential to understand that the past is already gone and you cannot change it. What happened, happened, and you can no longer alter past events. But what you can change is your perspective and approach to what happened, and this is crucial for moving forward and finding healing. Accepting what occurred does not mean justifying or agreeing with it, but rather acknowledging the reality of what happened and allowing yourself to release the emotional burden you've been carrying for so long. Sometimes, holding on to denial or resentment only keeps us trapped in a cycle of suffering and prevents us from moving forward. Acceptance is a powerful act of liberation. It doesn't mean forgetting or erasing what has happened, but rather finding the strength to confront it head-on and learn from it. When you choose to embrace acceptance, you open the doors to your own healing. You understand that the past doesn't define who you are in the present or limit your future possibilities. You realize that changing your perception and attitude towards what has happened provides you with the opportunity to find wisdom and growth amidst painful experiences. Daniel Goleman, a renowned author and the father of emotional intelligence, wisely stated, acceptance doesn't mean resignation, but rather stopping the struggle against what cannot be changed and finding the wisdom to change what is within our power. This statement invites us to let go of resistance and channel our energy towards what we can transform, thereby finding true freedom and fulfillment in our lives. What can help you to accept? Reflecting on what happened. Often, fear and family taboos prevent us from addressing traumatic events and openly discussing them. Phrases like, the past is in the past, or, it's better not to dig up old memories, and even, out of sight, out of mind, are common but are laden with fear. Fear arises for various reasons fear of feeling guilt, fear of pointing a finger at a family member as responsible, fear of confronting conflicts, or fear of changing family dynamics. 
This fear is especially palpable in situations of sexual abuse, where silence and denial often prevail, and everyone remains silent and looks the other way. Burying what happened seems like the safest option, as if denying it could make the trauma disappear. Accepting that reality involves facing internal conflict and the fear of others' reactions. It's understandable that often it's easier to bury what happened, as if it never occurred. However, the protagonist of that trauma cannot afford to remain condemned to silence. The fact that no one wants to look at that issue generates overwhelming feelings of powerlessness and loneliness. Not only do you have to deal with the trauma of abuse, but also with the abandonment by those who have chosen to look the other way and deny the existence of the situation. Finding oneself in this position is painful, but it's important to remember that you are not responsible for others' reactions. You are the one with the power to break the condemnation and begin the healing process. In cases of abuse, seeking the help of a therapist is advisable. There are many instances where a safe space to discuss what happened is hard to find. It's important to reflect on your own or seek the support of a therapist. The most important thing in this reflection is not to lose sight of the main goal healing those trapped emotions in the unconscious. Allow yourself to feel and express those emotions and work on freeing yourself from the emotional burden you carry. Remember that the healing process can be challenging, but it's also an act of self-love and self-care. A different perspective. Expand your horizons exploring new perspectives can be highly useful in addressing what has happened. Opening yourself up to conversations with individuals who have gone through similar situations or immersing yourself in reading shared experiences can offer you a different outlook on the events and aid you in accepting the reality of what occurred. By listening to different perspectives, you can gain a broader understanding of your own experience. This will allow you to see the situation from angles you hadn't considered before, and this can be an important step towards acceptance and personal growth. Remember that each individual lives and processes events in a unique way, but by sharing your experiences with others and learning from theirs, you can discover new ways to interpret your own story. It's not about comparing yourself or seeking solace in others' suffering, but rather about opening your mind to different perspectives and finding a viewpoint that helps you progress in your healing journey. Accepting what has happened doesn't mean invalidating your pain or minimizing your experiences, but rather opening yourself to the possibility of finding resources and tools to move forward. Listening to others who have gone through similar situations can provide you with a sense of connection and understanding, reminding you that you're not alone on your healing journey. So, don't hesitate to seek new perspectives. Allow yourself to listen, learn, and grow from others' experiences. Finding a different outlook can open doors to acceptance and personal growth. How to accept the reality of abandonment. Accepting the reality of abandonment can be a challenging process, but it's essential for healing our emotional wounds. It involves taking care of our inner child and confronting the open wounds that haven't yet been closed and healed. Fatherly abandonment is a deep wound that can impact our adult life in various ways. Our inner child, who never fully comprehends the reasons behind the abandonment, constantly feels abandoned. And as adults, we continue to repeat this pattern of self-abandonment, as if by doing so, we are getting closer to the father who left us. This happens for a simple reason. The unconscious operates under an irrational law, in the same place where we lost, we believe we will find. We seek love and connection precisely in the places where we think we lost them. If we experienced fatherly abandonment in our childhood, we might seek situations of abandonment in our adult life as an unconscious attempt to regain the lost paternal love. This law might appear absurd from a logical perspective, but the unconscious doesn't operate based on logic it operates on the need to resolve internal conflicts. Thus, when we feel that life isn't providing us with opportunities or our projects lack motivation, it's because our unconscious is desperately seeking the love and approval of the absent father. This paradox can be bewildering, but it's a deep dynamic that we must comprehend and heal. On the other hand, it's important to note that the father figure also represents strength and the ability to project ourselves into the world. In our culture, the role of the father has been associated with success in society. Therefore, when we experience abandonment or the absence of the father, it can be challenging to carry out our projects and trust ourselves and the world around us. How does abandonment affect hormone levels and how to rebalance them? 
The latest research has also delved into how emotional wounds, such as abandonment or neglect, can impact hormonal levels and neurological systems associated with emotional regulation. One of the key findings in this field is related to the hormone oxytocin, known as the love hormone or attachment hormone. Oxytocin plays a crucial role in forming emotional bonds and promoting feelings of connection and trust. It has been discovered that early experiences of abandonment or paternal wounds can negatively affect oxytocin levels in the brain, which can have implications for the ability to establish healthy relationships and experience secure attachment. Additionally, the effects of oxytocin deficiency can extend to other hormonal systems and neurotransmitters related to stress and emotional response. It has been observed that individuals with emotional wounds have heightened stress sensitivity. Chronic stress triggered by abandonment can lead to an increase in cortisol production, the stress hormone, which can have detrimental effects on the immune system, brain function, and mood. Moreover, prolonged elevation of cortisol can negatively impact the regulation of other hormones such as serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin, which play a significant role in emotional well-being and emotional stability. The good news is that despite the consequences, humans can reverse the process. In recent years, research has shown that it is possible to reverse the hormonal imbalance through various interventions and lifestyle changes. These studies have revealed the body's capacity to adapt and restore hormonal homeostasis. Through regular exercise, a balanced diet, restorative sleep, meditation processes, cortisol levels can be balanced and reduced, while increasing the secretion of serotonin and oxytocin. Another area of interesting research focuses on the field of neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change and reorganize throughout life. It has been discovered that neuroplasticity allows for the formation of new neural connections and the creation of new pathways in the brain. Dar. Norman Deutsch, a renowned psychiatrist and author, has extensively researched and written about this topic. In his book, The Brain That Changes Itself, he reflects on all these advancements in the field of neuroplasticity. I invite you to read his work if you're interested in this topic.